ten and a half. Yeah. It's, 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 the bus ride stuff, the relationship stuff, is much more effective. I, studies I've seen, it's more like thirty to forty percent when you go in either hand in hand or with a uh, referral. Yeah. So it's definitely a blend of the two, right? It's sitting down in front of a discipline to make the calls, while at the same time going out and leveraging those relationships and getting a blend of both. You can't have one without the other. One requires a lot of discipline. One requires, I think, thinking smart. Right? The bus riders is how do I manage this group of folks? They're going to help me get to my goal. And the calls are just, I know I don't want to do it, but I know I have to. I'm going to force myself to sit down and not let that tyranny be urgent or that a fire alarm that some customer or partner is pulling come in the middle of this two hours I've got blocked out for the entire week. Right? Well, I think that's one thing that I've mentioned computers to add that for investing in the whole connect wise um, initiative on the sales side. I think that's helped so, yeah. make making cold calls a little bit easier, a little bit easier to track and mm -hmm. and deal with so it doesn't feel like you're just sitting there calling off the damn spread. Mm -hmm. I mean that's how I get started in this business. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody in this room made more phone call outbound cold calls than me and Trevor Cruz. Over the course of time, just because that's how we got started in this business. That's right. I and agree. it can work. It, and it does work. That's why people do it. It just doesn't work quick enough. Right? So, do all of you guys know the 30, 40, 50, whatever the number of accounts is that Billy, David, and Amy have no partners in? I mean, do you know what's completely open white space? Areas where they need help with they'll grant an OIP just because you say the right customer name. I mean, do you know who those are? So I knew they I knew the Laura and and they it was it was really tough having a conversation with Dave last week just because he's like that's what they're struggling to go through right now. He's trying to find a top hundred list out of their a thousand companies or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. About the and, and we have and we have Amy and Dickens. Yeah. Sure. What about the table? Do you guys know where you'll make the biggest impact on their business in the quickest fashion? We asked for that list yet, but sat down and reviewed where there's a mutual opportunity to work together. So you're not just at Jason's point calling off the spreadsheet of thousand people in front of market, red, yellow, or green, right? And then come back to it six months later and do the exact same thing. I didn't know there was such. We're going to be interested to hear what, what Cisco is telling people like Amy and, and picking about engaging folks like us, how they're supposed to manage that with multiple partners. And, you know, obviously, there's no magic wand to where I'm going to get on number one on Amy's speed dial, where she's just going to call me every time. But there's, there's a number of folks, I'm sure, in the room that have have made that effort in some way, shape, or form, and for, for whatever reason, it hasn't become productive. Mm -hmm. And so I'm we're trying to understand what Cisco's mantra is on engaging folks like us so that we can sure. try to get the two to meet sure. up to where we're, yeah. time is being used effectively and, and sure. I can move up the list on, on any speed dial sure. and try to make that exactly. work. And, 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 and to be honest, if we're all honest in this room, yeah. Yeah. some of the reps are easier to get to. Absolutely. And uh, are more interested in working with It's all people, You're right, always going to be some turns in the punch bowl, brother. Yeah. You it's just got to figure out how to work around them and, yeah. and serve them better. So I would tell you that there is no right or wrong way to do it. There's no requirement that my boss has to me. There's no requirement that I ask of the team. I ask that they get to their number. They do it the correct way over our different architectures, collaboration, data center, and um, borderless networks, right? And they advance our partner's profitability and loyalty to Cisco across that way. That literally means Amy could work with one partner or she could work with a thousand. And as long as she does those three things, Third one might be a little difficult, she's only working with one partner, but as long as she does those things, for the most part, I'm going to give her the autonomy to run her business. So, let me caveat what I'm about to say with that, that it is in their hands. I will then say that there are 10 of you sitting around this table, right? Let's say Amy wants to take an hour with each of you. Now multiply that by doing it with NWN, IE, Catalyst, Presidio, CW, Data. BC3, ACS, Net3, and, 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 you quickly see the problem we run into, right? Which is we would do nothing more than meet with 
partners all day, every day, and have the very similar discussion. Which means she cannot do the two things I asked her to do more than anything, hit her number, and do it across her architectures. So, she has to start making some tough choices. Who do we say yes to? Who do we agree to meet with? What's, how do we hold each other accountable? What's different about you? When you call Amy, and you say, hey Amy, I'm new with Atnet. I want an hour of your time. Why? What's different about you from the person who had that seat before you? What's different about you than the three people that just called her from Catalyst? Why should she spend the time to give you that list? That's the, go ahead, Trevor, what's the answer to that? Uh, you got to be aggressive, show to her that you're aggressively pursuing her accounts. You've got to show her that you're willing to help her meet her $8 million quota. And then you've got to close business. Once you do get some appointments and get her uh, attention, AIDA. <laughs> for, yeah, exactly. I mean, first thing when you talk to these reps and you're introducing yourself for the first time and just kind of getting to know them, don't be afraid to ask them how they get paid and how you can help them get paid more. I mean, you should know how every rep that you work with in different men, I mean, you know, Cisco probably always paid about the same general way, that sort of thing, but each individual company you work with, you know, whatever, if you expect to get any extra attention out of them, then they're not going to give to any, you know, punk reseller that's out there. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of a word, it ain't a curse word. Um, <laughs> 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 punk reseller. <laughs> punk reseller. <laughs> if you expect to get any attention out of them, you've got to show them that, yeah, like Paulo said, you may not be bringing them deals on the steady. Eh, they get that. If they understand our business, if, if you've done a good job of explaining our business model to them, then they're going to understand that. But you'll get that special treatment if you know how they get paid and they see that you take an interest in get helping them when you can. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that anybody doesn't like you guys. We're all just a bunch of assholes that don't want to take the time. It's a, you know, we literally, literally can't. They're being asked to spend eight to ten customer meetings a week and four to six partner meetings a week. Map in your travel time, the prep for each one of those meetings, and the post more of every one of those meetings. Then you throw in the fact that most of us have children that we'd like to see every once in a while. You start to run out of that time in the course of a week pretty quick, right? So for you to break in with a brand new rep, if you're new, it's kind of like you break in with a brand new customer. That value prop's got to be pretty good. you got to be aggressive. you got to be consistent. And you got to show what's in it for me. Okay. With all. Yep. What's yeah. in it for me with this case, the customer being me or Amy being me or Billy being me. What are you doing for me right now? And, and Rick and I have a great case study of how it won't always be easy. I mean, the first six, eight months, me and Rick didn't get along at all. But, you know, one, it, it basically was, I was being tasked to work with Cisco, he was being tasked to work with me, which is a little different than, than kind of what we're talking about now. But you got you to gotta be aggressive and you've got to force yourself to break through whatever barriers or there are to injury with, with that person. So but we're looking for accountability and responsiveness. Two things that you guys have said you do a very good job of. Same right thing with customers. Which means if we give you a list of 10 people and say, we have no luck breaking into this, it's just pure white space. And look, every one of these folks has 250 plus employees. Can you set a meeting for us within oh, two weeks? One meeting out of 10 for us to go on, make a four-legged sales call together while we get this relationship going. You would be shocked how many reps we never hear from again. Never. I, I don't know whether you made the calls. Frankly, I don't care. You've demonstrated that by not keeping me up to date on your progress, or not being able to get through any of those, or at least just circling back and saying, hey man, I called, I got eight <coughs> machines, I've sent three faxes, 20 emails, I've knocked on a couple doors, there's just nothing going on here. You know, can we find 10 more? Or can we do X? By not doing any of that, you just said, said, just like everybody else, no accountability, no responsiveness, and I've got five other partners over here standing here with their hand out saying, hey, Amy, remember that deal I brought you last month? Yeah, that was 100K. When's the last time you threw me one? And you guys know you say it because you guys say it, right? 
How often does Cisco bring us deals? Not enough. We do X, Y, and Z for you. So when we get one of those few jump balls, we're going to send it to the guys that we are indebted to already, not the brand new guy looking to break in. And that's just the reality of the fact that there's... Well, Rick, I, you know, I, I disagree. I mean, I've seen it happen where y'all have sent it to the new guy that's trying to break in that's done that due diligence. That's doing the right job. Right that's doing the let's, right Let's do this. Let's test the new guy and go ahead and, <laughs> and put up 10 accounts that you guys want to get into. And I'll go ahead and take that challenge. They've got the list. Before we walk out of here today, figure out what 10 accounts in Columbia they need help getting into. Well, I'm going to slow your roll, Chief. i got a couple of counts. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need to all be involved in that conversation. And, I, and I, I'll tell you that, and I've heard it way too many times with, new, with, with newer salespeople. Do not tell your vendor. I'm the most disorganized. You know, uh, you know if you'll just, you know, I, I, I can take care of it. If you'll just throw me some opportunities, I'm there for you. I mean, it, it, of course you will. I mean, who wouldn't? You know, it, it isn't a... It is just an illusion to believe these guys just have deals sitting around going, gosh, I wonder who I should right. give this yeah. one to. Oh, I, well, all right. I don't actually want to close it. I'm just going to sit here in my back yeah, pocket. Yeah. I don't know. want that money. It's just all this shit's broken and it's just sitting there. I'm just going to wait for someone to ask me for it. I'm not actually going to go to make it happen. There was, a, there, was a small, there was a small period of time from about 95 to 99 where this industry was growing at such an exponential curve that literally there would be leads falling out of people's pockets. And literally a Cisco rep would drop off a router on Monday, come back in to pick it up on Tuesday. The guy says, no, you can't have it. Write me a check. No, I'm taking it, but you can call Mike here, and he'll get you the router tomorrow. The reality is today is that when a lead shows up for us to be able to work with another partner, <coughs> generally out of the issue of is that we've got an end user that is extremely frustrated with partner A, and they're looking for a new choice. So. Do we trust you? Do you have the engineering expertise? Is there a working relationship? Because I've got a customer that has raised their hand and said, I'm tired of brand A. Yeah. I want brand B. Which means our ass is now on the line if we recommend brand B, and then brand B doesn't deliver. So but I, I still come back to be specific in what you're asking. Be consistent with what you're asking for. <laughs> Approach it from a what's in it for me, just to break the ice. And then if they still don't respond, Copy Lonson or Joel or me. I, we can't fix these things if we don't know about them. Right? And, and that's fair because if my team is not responding and you've given them every reason to and you've done it the right way, then that's an issue on our side of the table. Right? And that's something we'll address. Hey, I have some advice for the, someone. I'm kind of not far along from where you are, just a few months ahead of you. But what I found, not only with Cisco, but with the other folks, is that. Um, I had the same sort of frustrations. It feels like my stuff wasn't getting responded to or whatever. But I realized that, um, and, and, and an example, I guess, with, with Amy and I, I invited Amy into one of my accounts. And we went in to see an account and sat down together. And from that point forward, I felt like things began to move forward in a lot of respects. Um, and, but, but not just with Cisco, whether it's with EMC or VMware. I, I would suggest probably the best plan is to pull the vendor into your account first. Mm -hmm. Bring them in, because they've got quotas that they've got to make this many contacts with customers. They have to, eight to ten. That's right. And if you, if you bring something into you know, my grandfather would call it priming the pump. Um, if, if you prime that pump first by bringing some things to the table, you find that everything else moves smoother and faster later. But if, if we, when I was going and say, hey, what can you give me? Um, you know, I don't, I don't blame the vendor. I, I mean, whoever they are, they've got... 10, 20 different partners to work with. So that'd be probably the advice I'd give you. That's what worked for me. And the text point is, if you've got that list of white space accounts, right, and you've got a meeting with a white space account on Amy's list, and you're going in there to talk about storage, who cares? She's never met with them. Mm -hmm. Call her. She'll go in there and meet <clears> with them and sit there, just like this right here, for the 45 minutes that you're talking about EMC or whatever, and in that last 15 minutes, she'll get to say, oh, and I'm the Cisco rep, and we have UCS these days, you know? And bam, those people don't, they, they met with you and the Cisco rep, and now she remembers you. Well, it's cool that the customers love it. Uh, yes, they do. I mean, I got great points with, with Wida because I brought Cisco in, and they not met with their Cisco rep. Uh, well, I, you know, I think that's one thing we can, let, sorry to catch you up to, no, that's one thing we can leverage with the whole value proposition thing. Mm -hmm. Is not only yeah we sell Cisco, but the relationship with Cisco. 
and that is seen in Whiteside.